This is the second in a series of videos that will discuss how a family home that is supplied by utility power and gas can be converted into a self-sufficient home. The house is real and therefore, we do not know for sure if the project will be able to achieve the desired results, but in any case this will help us to reflect on the different steps that someone, with the same ambition, must take. Please, join us on this journey. At Energy Technology Sherpa, we want to bring you this channel to get acquainted with technologies and investments in the energy sector, primarily clean energy technologies. Sherpa is a key concept as we want to be the right companion for you in a journey that is difficult somehow. In this video, we will be drafting the blueprint for achieving our net zero goals for this specific detached house. Our project is an independent single family home. As we will remember, the electrical energy consumption is 6,000 kilowatt hours per year and it has a contracted power of 6.9 kilowatts. It also consumes natural gas for domestic hot water and heating. Natural gas consumption is 2,200 cubic meters per year, which is equivalent to 24,000 kilowatt hours of energy. As of today, the most efficient way to locally generate electricity from renewable sources, and therefore emission free, is to install photovoltaic modules. As we saw in the previous video, the house has enough space to install photovoltaic modules that will be capable of producing about 12,000 kWh. This will help to reduce the demand on the electrical grid by 2,600 kilowatt hours, and it will generate a surplus of 9,400 kilowatt hours that will be poured into the grid. To reduce the surplus energy that is injected into the network, it is planned to install a 20 kilowatt hours lithium battery with a discharge capacity of 50% which will help lengthen its life. Assuming an efficiency round trip of 90%, the battery will make it possible to take advantage of another 2,500 kilowatt hours that will no longer be injected into the network. An electric water heater of about 200 liters will help us to further reduce the self-produced energy that we are not taking advantage of. It will also allow us to reduce the consumption of natural gas. The remaining consumption of natural gas is devoted to heating the home. With the introduction of the hot water tank, we have already electrified the production of hot water services. To achieve complete electrification of the residents, the condensing boiler that feeds the radiant floor will be replaced by a low enthalpy heat pump with a COP of 3.5. At this time we have fully electrified the residence, maintaining the same original consumption levels. We need to consume about 8,000 kWh from the network and we also inject about 4,000 kWh into the network. This gives us a net balance of 4,000 kWh. Can we go further and eliminate dependence on the electrical network? We cannot do it with the technologies currently available. Increasing photovoltaic production by 4000 kilowatt hours is not too great a challenge. This will allow us to achieve a net balance with zero emissions. The problem is how to move that production from summer, which is when surpluses are produced, to winter, where heating consumption raises demand. Currently, there is no residential technology for storing electrical or thermal energy with an energy density that allows this seasonal transfer of energy. Therefore, we will continue to need the electrical network that acts as a large battery. Thanks for watching.